Okay, so apologies in advance uh, for this video. It's a bit of a mess. I've had to cut out like 10 minutes of content because it wasn't suitable for all advertisers. So I've made that available. The full version of this video is available uh, to channel members. If you want to have a look at how you become a channel member, click the blue button under, the, uh, under this video. And uh, if not, let's just get into the video. It's another one about Harry. Prince Harry, because <laughs> the other person I was talking about is a persona non grata on uh, on YouTube, and we're not allowed to talk about him, so I guess you'll have to go to my members section if you want to find out who I was talking about in that video. Anyway, let's have a look at Candace Owens. What's interesting though, reading the book, you can just tell how manipulated and sucked in he is by his wife. I mean... Candace, he still believes, he still believes that Meghan had no idea who he was. He says multiple times in the book, she's <laughs> never Googled me. She's never Googled my family. She has him wrapped around her little finger. Right? And that's not to say that Harry shouldn't take the blame. I've always said right from the start, I think they are both to blame for their actions. But he is manipulated by her, is he not? Yeah. Yeah, he definitely is Dan Wooten. He is absolutely 100% manipulated by her because he's not intelligent. But he's also got a tendency towards narcissism. He couldn't write this novel. He couldn't, he couldn't give all those stories to the man who wrote it for him without being a massive twat himself. So, yes, I agree. I think if he'd have married, you know, a nicer person, they could have had a, a better influence on him. They could have stopped him. They could have stopped him being such a pathetic victim. But he, I think he has been that all his life. It's just that he happened to shack up with a manipulative narcissist who preyed upon those feelings. Absolutely. And what's so funny about that is Megan is a trained actress. What she does is that she studies people. She's not a good actress, but she is a trained one, right? She's been doing it her entire life. And there is no doubt that she studied Princess Diana. She studied her mannerisms towards Harry when he was a boy and the way that she grabs her face. And this is the psychopathic elements of what she does, uh, putting a pregnancy text next, next to Princess Diana's hair, saying that she put her hands on the grave to have a conversation with her, bursting into tears. And she has convinced there's a thing called in psychology called the Freudian transfer. She has convinced convinced Harry that she is Princess Diana, except this time he has an opportunity to save her. That is the truth. And, and it's worked, right? So she's done this convincing performance for Harry. That I don't know how I ended here. I just love you. And I'm just like your mom. And the one chance that you had to save your mom again, when, she, when he recounts that tale and the things that she said, she threatened homicide on her unborn child and suicide on herself. And, and then she convinced Harry that it was his idea to use to leave the UK. Now, of course, if you couldn't, threatened to commit suicide and homicide against my child, you basically said to Harry, you need to do something radical or I'm going to take my life. And that something radical was to leave the UK and to leave the royal family. And yet he believes that this was his own idea and not that these ideas were manipulated and planted into his head by Megan. As I said, he just isn't very bright. He actually believes everything that that she says to him and and unfortunately i don't see how he can get out of it because he's got no one around him it's a perfect example when you learn about abusive relationships isolating someone entirely from their friends and their family making them believe that their friends and their family are the enemies i mean these are classic signs of an abusive relationship she has accomplished all of them getting him to speak loudly as speak out against his family i mean what late stage of uh, of of victimhood is he in right now so he is I, i'm angry at Harry waste onto his family there is a part of me that does see him as a true victim in a very dangerous relationship that he is being manipulated within yeah i, I mean yeah very concisely put as ever with Candice and I think that's possibly part of her problem if she stammered a bit more she might think <laughs> you see Candice where you're going wrong where <laughs> she's like my age and she has so much bigger a platform than me uh, I'm not jealous though I'm not jealous of you Candice I agree with everything she said there Harry's not very bright I think there does need still to be a little bit more emphasis on the fact that Harry is a twat, right? We need to all come out and recognize his twattiness, right? He is entitled, he believes that he's a victim, he believes that it's unfair that he was born after William, which is the bit I'm gonna get to here in the, the book, it's right near the beginning, I'm gonna read you a couple of lines from it that will be paraphrased, okay, algorithm? Okay, so if you're reading along with me and uh, or you, you're listening to the audible version, which is fantastic because you get to listen to Harry's pathetic, quivering voice reading the whole hilarious 
uh, piece of satire. Um, we're on chapter two of the first part. It's right at the beginning of the book, right? And uh, it's this description of how horrible his life always was, right? Harry has had such a bloody hard time of it, and none of you, you idiot plebs, could ever possibly understand, right? We could never understand, right? Near Granny's Lift, through a pair of crimson saloon doors and along a green tartan floor, was a smallish staircase with a heavy iron banister. It led up to the second floor. Blah, blah, fucking blah. He's describing Balmoral. Nobody gives a shit, right? But anyway, it leads up to the second floor west, where stood a statue of Queen Victoria. And I loved this line. I thought it was majestic. Again, he's trying to make William look like a piece of shit, but he makes himself look like a piece of shit, which is hilarious. Anyway, in Balmoral, you walk up this staircase, right? Something we will never do. Damn you, you know, because I'm only a millionth in line to the throne. You know, I'm probably only there as an organ donor. Uh, yeah, they only had me. That's the only reason my mother had me, you know, to be a bloody, the millionth organ donor to William, right? Right? Anyway, just following Harry's logic. Anyway, um, yeah, he says you go up this staircase, right, and there's a statue of Queen Victoria. I always bowed to her as I, uh, as I passed your majesty, right? Your majesty. Is that how you bow? I don't know. I wouldn't know how to bow. I never did that. Anyway, um, yeah, I always bowed as I passed, your majesty. Willie did too. We'd been told to. But I'd have done it anyway. <laughs> what a penis! <laughs> Can you hear that? Can he hear himself? The jealous little prick. That's insane. That is a child talking. That is a child, right? Willie did it too, but I would have done it anyway. We were told to. Willie did it too. We were told to do it, but I would have done it anyway. I was just really good anyway. Willie only did it because he was told to, the slimy bastard. He wouldn't have bowed to Queen Victoria if he wasn't told to. That's right. I'm good. He's bad, right? Anyway, that's what that's what he says, right? Um, well, I, I'd have done it anyway. I found the grandmama of Europe hugely compelling. And not just because Granny loved her, nor because Pa once wanted to name me after her. Right, yeah, and Diana didn't let him name him. What? Name her? What? What? Name me after her? Oh, after her husband, right, uh, Albert. <laughs> what are you going to call him? Victory? The Invictus Games. Oh, my God. It all makes sense. Well, no. Anyway. Uh, yeah, no, uh, 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 his mum didn't let him get called Albert. Great. Victoria knew great love, soaring happiness, but her life was essentially tragic. Like, right, so he is a child. This is before Diana died, right? His life was tragic, and this is why he saluted the statue of Queen Victoria, because as a fucking ten-year-old or whatever he was here, he was there like, Your Majesty, right? Your Majesty, Your Majesty, because because he would have done it anyway because he understood tragedy at that age. He understood what a tra how tragic life was. You know, he he was re he was big into Nietzsche, right? Life is one long fucking tragedy. He realised that, even though Diana wasn't dead yet, right? Um, anyway. Victoria knew great love, soaring happiness, but her life was essentially tragic. Her father, Se her father, Prince Edward, Duke of Kent and Strathern, uh, was said to be a sadist, sexually aroused by the sight of soldiers being horsewhipped. Who isn't, Harry? I should, probably shouldn't say stuff like that again. Fucking algorithm. I'm paraphrasing, and the, but he did actually say that. Right. Sexually aroused by the sight of soldiers being horsewhipped, and her husband Albert died before her eyes. Yeah, he understood all this. This is why he saluted her as a ten year old in Balmoral, right? Right. Okay. This isn't a lie. This is all a hundred percent true. 
Also, during her long, lonely reign, she was shot at eight times on eight separate occasions by seven different subjects. One of them got away with it twice. <laughs> on, on two different occasions. That's amazing. I didn't know that. So, you know, you do actually learn something from reading this. Also, he got an early prototype of the Xbox, apparently, because that was the Diana's last present to him. Even though the Xbox didn't come out until 2001, 2002. She died in 97. She got him an Xbox. Anyway, yeah, whatever. Anyway, who cares? Not one bullet hit the mark. Nothing could bring Victoria down. Just like you, Harry. Just like you. Not being the king is the only thing that brings you down. Or uh, people asking if you unborn child might be I don't know, look like you or your wife that brings you down because of the unconscious bias, right but bullets could never bring you down, could they, just like Victoria, just like you anyway moving on a bit because there's another good bit here in the same chapter. Well, Morrill had 50 bedrooms, one of which had been divided for me and Willie, adults called it the nursery, yeah Willie had the larger half with a double a double bed, a good sized basin, a cupboard with mirrored windows. No, with mirrored windows, <laughs> with mirrored doors, a beautiful window looking down on the courtyard, the fountain, the bronze statue of a roe deer buck. My half of the room was far smaller, less luxurious. Another coal for the fire. You fucking, you're living in a castle, you prick. You're the younger brother. That's why your half of this fucking room was smaller. Don't you get it? That happens in every family. There's a hierarchy. Of course, the older brother gets more than you, right? They get first choice because they're bigger and harder than you. And he still is. He knocked you out, didn't he? I don't know. I don't know. What am I even saying? What am I even saying? And I don't know. He's been petty, though, isn't he? He's, 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 he's trying to make out that it, you know, his, his life was desperately unfair because as a child he got the smaller half of a bedroom in a castle where his brother's half of the room was the one that overlooked the courtyard with the bronze fucking fountain, you prick! I can't deal with it. I just can't deal with it. Every second child. This happens all the fucking time. Right. Particularly between boys or girls, right? The older one, the younger one. They're jealous of each other. Grow up, you soft pansy. I can't... Ah, God! Yeah, it was my brother's half of the fucking room in Balmoral Castle that overlooked the bronze statue of the Roebuck deer. Ugh. <laughs> It's straight out of Dickens, isn't it? You, Pip, are a real hero. I never asked why I didn't care. You clearly did care, because you're writing about it now as a 40-year-old. I never asked why I didn't care, but I also didn't need to ask. I didn't need to ask because it was all really obvious, right? I was the spur. He says it. Two years older than me, Willie was the heir, where I, whereas I was the spur. The spaz, more like. I, I said spaz in a previous video and a, and a lot of people jumped on me. One, I think, in the comments said, Not cool, dude. Not cool, dude. Well, it is cool. Because spaz, where I'm from, means, like, you fucking idiot, right? Doesn't mean anything else. I'm from Sheffield, right? And I grew up in the 90s and the 2000s. And if you called someone a spaz, it was hilarious. It didn't have anything to do with disabilities or anything like that. So shut up. I'm not Beyonce. I'm not going to change my lyrics, all right? So you can get lost. This wasn't merely how the press referred to us, though it was definitely that. What? This wasn't merely how the press referred to us, but though it definitely was that. 
It was definitely that. <laughs> this was shorthand often used by Pa and Mummy and Grandpa and Grandpa and even Granny. The air and the spare, there was no judgment about it, but also no ambiguity. God, it's so unfair. It's so unfair that you were not born before your brother. What a... God! Why can't you be king? Can't you feel his pain, everyone? Can't you see what he's going through? His half of the room didn't overlook the bronze steel of the Roebuck deer. Are we not human? Can we not understand his suffering? The robot, the fountain, the mirrored cupboard doors. I know exactly what he's going through. I, the same, a similar thing happened to me in the palace where I spend my summers. You know. Ah, oh, fucking. What's the fucking point? There's no point in even making a stupid satirical analogy of that, is there? It's so obviously ridiculous what he's saying. It's so fucking odd. This whole book is amazing. Listen to it on Audible. I implore all of you to buy it. Who cares? Get him richer. Who cares? It's just getting more entertaining. <laughs> this is just the beginning, people. Anyway, it gets worse. There's no ambiguity. I was the shadow, the support, the plan B. I think you were just their second child, mate. I was brought into the world in case something happened to Willie. Really? Really? You weren't just a second child, like everyone has. Like so many people have a second child. You're not just happy to be alive. I mean, let's forget about your immense privilege and wealth. Aren't you just happy that people brought you into the world and loved you? I was summoned to provide backup, distraction, diversion, and if necessary, a spare pot. Kidney, perhaps, blood transfusion, speck of bone marrow, this was all made explicitly clear to me uh, from the start of life's journey and regularly reinforced thereafter. Bollocks! No, it wasn't. There is absolutely no way your parents, your grandparents or anyone ever fucking said to you, you lying, narcissistic twat. There is no way anyone ever said that to you. I'm calling your bullshit. I don't care anymore. I used to have more of a sense of humour about this thing. It is hilarious. Right, with Megan, it's hilarious in a way that's just, uh, it's just so vacuous and bizarre that I can't be angry with it uh, about it uh, at all. But this guy, with all of his fucking privilege, making out that his life has been one long tragedy. Like he's describing the bedroom in Balmoral Palace, right? And then lying. Because he's lying. These are lies. There is no way that was ever said to him or reinforced maybe someone might have said it i don't who would have said of course it would have been said like i was told you know that members of your family might need bone marrow or transfusions and stuff that's just you know the same thing would happen to you harry if you got ill william would be there to give you a blood transfusion what did they just let you die what, what are you talking about what the fuck are you talking about i'm i just I, I'm losing the ability to remain in any way objective here, I think, is a big... I need to... A kidney, perhaps. Blood transfusion. Speck of bone marrow. This was all made explicitly clear to me from the start of life's journey and regularly reinforced. You realise it's all a lie, don't you? <laughs> I'm done. I'll see you in the next one.